all the people who are early professional early career professionals they are the ones who will be governing this change or leading this change in the years to come you know decades to come and that leads to a lot of opportunities that also governs that all these people would have so many opportunities to pick a problem create a better way of doing it innovating around solutions and penetrating those solutions within the industry Welcome to The Arcade by NASA India. In today's episode, we are thrilled to host an innovator who at the young age of 28 has shaped India's foremost upscaling platform for architects and engineers in construction. Harkuwar Singh is a second generation architect and alumnus of the prestigious Institute School of Planning and Architecture New Delhi, who founded Novator in 2021 to propel technology adoption in the construction center. Novator has since blossomed in a global upscaling powerhouse enriching the journeys of 2 lakh learners across 45 countries. Join us as we delve into a riveting conversation with Harkuwar and availing his insights on navigating the dynamic landscape of architecture, making strategic decisions and crafting a successful career in this era of technology. Hello Harkuwar, we welcome you to the arcade. Thank you so much for doing it. So being from SPA Delhi and being one of my seniors and knowing that in in your office all of you refer to you as HK maybe I can also do that right Yeah yeah sure you can you can call me HK and uh, I'm very glad to be here learning about the entire series NASA is doing pretty excited to you know contribute to it So to get started with our podcast we wanted to talk about a major issue that looms over our construction industry Like there has been several reports over the years that have highlighted the fact that the construction industry is the least digitized one. So, can you shed light on what, according to you, are the major issues due to which the construction industry is the least digitized? Sure. Um, so, if we pick up last few decades and uh, you know try and set some context where we are headed in the entire space of AEC industry. like the architecture engineering and construction space yeah. um so so traditionally obviously like you know architects have been the master builder of public infrastructure throughout you know the kingdoms that have been built the things the way that have, that has been evolved and specifically in the last 10 years what we learned and recognized and especially this was the time i actually also finished my bachelor's in architecture um i recognized that in this last 7 years the the digitization the adoption of new age technologies the more emphasis on data has really picked up momentum yeah and one of the key accelerators is, has also been covid you know when when everyone was working remotely when everyone uh, you know all construction projects were being handled uh, with you know the people who are governing and designing those projects not being on the site it really uh, you know push for more adoption of uh, virtual collaboration and likes of these things and that's where we recognize since these technologies are gaining momentum uh, what is the bottleneck because one of the another things that we see like i was going through one of the uh, global industry research report and recognize that construction is one of the least digitized industry and probably falls at second last in the entire space among 17 industries and that leads to a lot of other reasons like people not being pay, paid well in the industry people not being able to produce a lot of work in less time it's a lot of brute force work it's a lot of repetitive work and and that's where all these technologies come together and the simple question was um uh, why this this these technologies are not being adopted and we learned that among all the reasons one of the key reasons that stood out was uh adoption of these technologies by learning new skills by learning things that are more relevant and and you know there are always these developments and advancements happening to do repetitive things in a better manner however the adoption has been slow for these and that directly linked in with upskilling altogether so seeing that uh, we recognize that education and 
the skill gap are the two key parts which lead to lesser digitization of the industry there is more but this governs almost to 55 to 60% of where we lie with respect to digital penetration in the entire ecosystem yes so yeah uh it's good that you touched upon the uh, architecture education for students because that is something we as nasa india also would like to uh speak about in an open forum uh so with nasa we are constantly in touch with uh, students across the india and we know that there is some gap uh, in the current system so with your observations would you like to talk upon the current ec- education system of architecture at, uh, in the indian context all right so uh probably to set some context again for the listeners i i graduated and finished my bachelor's 5 years back and uh, if if i share like what sort of it space me and my co-founders at novato were so we graduated and uh, one of the key concerns was that we spent 5 years studying bachelor's of architecture and uh, um we we didn't have clarity of what next because the simple question is like if i pick up a job the job or you know the employer probably tells me that uh you are not equipped enough to be paid well yeah. and you are yet to be you know nurtured for almost a year to a year so that you can you know contribute well to the space overall and the other part was where you know i had a lot of conversation with my senior batches from my institute who were two year three year five year senior to me and the learning was they are still figuring it out they are still finding their footing in the ecosystem that how should they be you know like building their careers and a big chunk of them actually you know decided to opt out of the architecture you know ecosystem entirely move into likes of ui ux move into likes of something else all together and that was one of the key questions that stuck with us that why is it like this and that led to a very strong analysis and introspection that you know we went into what we did was we said okay probably uh, you know we know certain things and let's probably meet more people in the industry let's meet more practicing people let's meet more people who are still in colleges and we probably spoke to students studying in more than 50 architecture colleges in the country and what stood out for us was two parts most of the colleges had you know curriculum that seemed to be not in sync with what the industry is wanting you to know the new age technologies that you know pay you well pay you greatly and the second was when you break down the curriculum that is taught across 5 years one of the another outstanding observation for us was that a major chunk of learning is taught by individuals who haven't built a building in their life and and we are over here being you know like nurtured or being you know like taught how to build the infrastructure for the country and and this is where there is a bot- major bottleneck in what what is being brought out as outcomes for these people who are graduating from the architecture institutions so that 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 was the question we said a layer has to be added on top of it and let's figure out what can go into it so so to probably narrow down your question with respect to where does education lie in today's day uh i would say there is a lot of data and stats don't lie and there there is a you know very clear observation at a lot of reports where they say 90% of technical education graduates in our country are not employable mm. and and that comes out to be a very you know uh, big problem for the country to be solved for so yeah uh, those were great insights achki so uh, i believe that this two points uh, will help break down the areas and like find us a solution towards so about and talking about this uh, solution we believe that novator is also trying to bridge the gap between the technology and the construction sector so can we talk about novator's journey and what are we trying to do 
I'll probably like just go back to the you know earlier days. This is around 2019, and uh, it was like me, my batchmates, and we were we were trying to just figure out the the gap I just mentioned to you, and we were trying to you know pick up that why isn't anyone solving for this education gap in the industry, and. We we recognized that if at all some solutions existed, they were really not up to the mark, or they they weren't like you know the ones where education like if if we talk about one part which is education around the spectrum of AEC industry, and one part is overall innovations in the education sector that how technology is leveraged to impart great education. So these were the two parts where we were continuously learning and trying to figure out that where the gaps lie. And over the course of initial months, we recognized that uh, the gap is huge in, in, on, on both the parts. Like if you talk about technology part, there's a lot of you know innovation that has happened in the last 15 odd years, but there is yet so much to do with respect to personalization of learning, adaptability, because everyone is a different learner. Everyone looks at uh, you know things in a very different way. Some are very visual learners. Some love to read about things, consume it. Some are fast learners. Some are slow learners. And and there is much more to do how personalization kicks into learning. And if we talk about the entire space of architecture and and teaching the next generation of people who are going to build buildings. Uh, the topics and the curriculum had to be top notch had to be you know such that it's it's being adopted uh widely the the processes the workflows you know we we are moving into a more globalization you know oriented world construction had used to be very contextual but it's moving more global the uh when when we pick up bim for example the Reba framework is being adopted globally in terms of workflows and processes, and and governments are moving towards BIM adoption. Um, private sector is anyway using it for more efficient work, and and that's where the need is kicking in more and more. So, I do these things. We narrow down. Two problems have to be solved. Uh, there has to be people who have been practicing out there coming in to teach. And we bring in that flexibility to the professionals that how they teach on the platform. And the second part was while they come in to teach, they bring in newest technologies being taught on the platform to upskill the next generation of architects, civil engineers, and mechanical engineers all on the latest platform. Now, in terms of journey, uh, we had our own series of ups and downs figuring out all these parts. We knew nothing of it. I'm speaking to you about these things today. But probably four years back, we had no idea what we are working on. Mm. But I'll tell you what we were clear of. We were clear of an intent that this problem exists. We understand this problem really well. And we want to do this for the community and the industry. And that would be fun to work on. So through that, it has been months to, you know, uh, years of bringing people together, uh, uh, you know, many of the people we initially taught in person through offline workshops, uh, they would be knowing that we, we taught close to 1000 students in the offline space just before COVID had happened. And that was one incredible journey of learning different people's perspectives. Um, apart from that, then we moved into actually uh, figuring out what online learning is all about across a year's time, going deep into different uh, technologies of learning, how content consumption operates overall. And it's been mostly last two years where we have been able to bring parts of it together and, and, and build a platform where architects can learn, collaborate, the community exists, they have fun with each other. And at the end of the day, you know, there are partners who hire the graduates of Norator directly. So that has been the journey overall. Yeah, it's like very great to know how Novator is empowering students with skills so that they can build a successful career from themselves. And now that we are talking about successful careers, I would like to know that what for you is a successful career. And apart from that, most importantly, like how an architecture student talking, uh, looking at this video could 
build a successful career for themselves so probably let's let's probably address uh, you know how do we define a successful career and uh, we we really try to dig deep into what actually people define as successful career and there are two things that stood out for us over the course of time that matter to almost everyone all smart individuals want to do two things one they want to have a you know very intellectually rewarding career where they work on challenging problems they solve those problems that brings in satisfaction and a sense of accomplishment and happiness in the work they do and second is while they are doing this you know like like pursuing very challenging problems they have a financially rewarding career as well they grow in their careers financially and when for an individual these two things come hand in hand it is pretty you know satisfying and leads to a sense of contentment over a course of time and one of the key principles why we have been working to build novator is how do we bring in this sort of alignment and uh, sort of uh, understanding to all the people that how do you build a satisfying career for yourself and rest is actually all ambition right everyone carries a different ambition and over there against that you benchmark what all you want to do you also need to have a pretty strong self awareness that what sort of skills do i have what am i really good at and and that's that's a pretty different topic around the lines of skills how are they acquired what are certain you know innate skills that you have that are gifts you are born with and how you can build on top of it over time but overall on top of it these are the two things how you you know set goals for yourself as per your ambition and on that journey you keep doing challenging work and making sure that it's been financially rewarded as well for you yes you had another part to the question right yes uh, what's that uh, so like as we know that uh, the architecture students are very confused when they are talking about like choosing a career so if a architecture student is watching this video what would be your key points that he could take away uh, for building a successful career for himself or themselves okay so just narrowing down this discussion probably into the you know space of architecture and for architects or early career professionals in the industry so i was sitting with a couple of my faculties from you know my college days and uh, they probably would have graduated in late 90s or early 2000s sometime and a couple of them actually from early 90s as well who had graduated and over the course of conversation one of the key insights or things that stood out for us was that among the architects the the entire uh, you know pattern of starting their own practice the intent to start their own practice is continuously reducing yeah probably 30 years back one third or almost like uh, you know 40% of the batch would go out there and eventually start their own practice after graduating and and that was a different time starting a practice was relatively easier competition wasn't that hard to get projects the world moved in a very different space and in today's day probably among the batch 1 in 20 or 2 in 20 students actually end up starting a practice and you know architects are being less entrepreneurial now this would be one part of it where we can narrow down that probably the context is such that uh people don't want to start up their practice but the other part is industry is continuously becoming more organized and structured and because of that since the industry is becoming more organized and structured the job ecosystem is also thriving and becoming uh, better and better especially in the last 5 7 years that uh you can get better paying jobs given that you know the skills and you you know the latest technologies you have an understanding of 
what is happening in the industry and you know as an architect how well do you understand sustainability how well do you have an understanding of data how well do you have understanding of um, you know collaboration how well do you understand uh, construction management all these new head skills that are needed in the industry and and that's where the structure is kicking in among you know architecture firms real estate firms infrastructure firms real estate management firms and and they are all hiring architects given that they know they understand data and they understand the skills that are needed for them to be of use over there in these industry and firm so so for me like what i would narrow down for the individuals who are just about to graduate and uh, are probably early in their careers know that there are two types of skills there are certain innate skills that you are born with and then there are certain acquired skills that you gain with your experiences in life like the the things that you are exposed to the literature that you read and uh, you you keep building on it the where your you know curiosity takes certain people with their innate capabilities have uh, great iq have good understanding of math and logic certain people with their innate capabilities have a great command on people or understand people really well or understand emotion really well and then th- th- there is an entire spectrum of again this part like how innate skills are broken down and in acquired skills there are two parts to it how well do you know the softwares how well do you know uh you know uh, probably creating boqs or creating some xyz thing that is totally a hard skill and then there is soft skill which again governs to how do you organize work manage people communicate all these parts coming together i think it starts with self awareness among these parts that where is your key strength and how you can build and thrive on those key strengths in the time to come and keep learning and keep growing because i i have probably endless data points which i can put across that what the ones that continuous learning is the only way you can grow yourself and build yourself probably another exciting data point for our listeners um you know there is something called half life of a skill it is similar to radioactivity uh that in how much time the value of a skill reduces to half or probably would be paid half let's take for an example you know a skill and the industry is ready to pay you 100 rupees correct and in some time the industry will evolve because new technologies will come up new ways of doing things will come up and suddenly for that skill itself you would be paid not 100 rupees but 50 rupees because the industry has totally evolved now and that's what half life of a skill is that in how much time the value of a skill has been reduced to half so to set some context almost 100 years back in 1930s it was said that the half life of a skill is almost 40 years so on graduation if you learn a skill probably that skill can help you earn and have a good living till the time you retire in today's day in industry 4.0 the half life of a skill has come down to 4 years approximately and that leads to a space where people need to continuously grow continuously learn continuously skill themselves in the new developments that are happening in the industry out there and stay up to date so that they can keep growing and thriving in the industry so yeah probably a lot of points for everyone to pick on and think about so like you touched upon the fact that in students there's a lot of confusion after their under graduation to what career path they to choose right so but you made a clear decision about building specialized courses of two core technologies that is bim and computation design so would you like to talk about this two technologies in depth and also give us a give our listeners an idea about the technologies that are changing the landscape in construction so there is a significant of amount of research that you know in the initial days and still ongoing a team kept doing that what are the skills that are highest in demand 
and what are the technologies that are being needed in the industry at scale and uh, the technologies which have you know high value being added to the organizations as well and the the setting came together that if you actually see when we build anything in the real world there are four parts to it we start with surveying which moves to planning and designing which moves to constructing it and then the fourth phase is operating and maintaining that infrastructure and we realize that among all these four parts data is the backbone data is picking up momentum in the industry like anything now you know you see technologies like gis being utilized for surveying government has made so many initiatives how you know uh you know india is being mapped across in the right manner drone technology is evolving incredibly fast data is being used to you know design things we are writing algorithms we are writing grasshopper scripts we are we are using all sorts of plugin to figure out you know what are the sustainability aspects of what we are building how probably you know we can pick up you know topics like net zero or carbon neutral and all these parts of it and what's what stood out is it all eventually links to data and that's where we we identified that bim actually is going to be everywhere in the built environment it's it's how things would be planned designed constructed and maintained and operated and that data would further give feedback on how better can be designed or how well can be designed further and and i knew that it it was pretty evident that a bim course focus for architects has to be put together that makes people industry ready gets them employment opportunities or if you know the individuals who are running their practices they can learn and adopt those to their firms as well because that's where the future is more organized more structured and more data led and similarly specifically for architects what stood out was architects are designers at their core and you know when you look at the life cycle of when a project comes to life design is relatively the space where lesser time is spent and you need you know smaller chunk of people who should be top notch or really good at design and we recognized architects are meant to design and computational design or leveraging computational capabilities is the way forward to design anything and everything it has been happening for past few decades but now the demand or the tailwind has kicked in that everyone should be knowing computational design to succeed and thrive in their career and and that's how we picked it up but we are not limited to that we know that construction and project management being adopted is also super crucial for the professionals and apart from that um you know other technologies moving into robotic construction drone based assembly and likes of these things is where the future is headed and that's where novator would also be working to you know bring those parts together for everyone so i guess this was insightful and give, it gives our listeners a good understanding of what these two technologies exactly are i guess to sum up i would ask you an interesting question according to the un study 68% of the world is expected to live in urban areas by 2050 what role do you think architecture plays in shaping and impacting india so let's look at two three governing parts to this question and you know firstly let's let's address like population like india india is now the country with the highest population in the world and this will certainly be growing more and apart from that one of the other parts is the way you know cities like gurugram bangalore hyderabad pune have come up in a very short term relatively shorter term last 10 years 12 years where the development and infrastructure and flow of money to build these cities has been you know extraordinary overall and that leads to another third part that probably 
governs and defines this that India is a four trillion dollar economy today, almost a four trillion dollar economy today, and there is a vision that India at hundred. India in 2047 approximately would be a 25 26 trillion dollar economy and that's what everyone is working towards and rooting for and that basically means growing it by 6 6 and a half times in the coming 20 25 years now this leads to a very evident thing that the amount of infrastructure and the amount of development real real estate development that is going to take place in a country is going to be incredible like uh, one of the stats i read in another un report as you had mentioned was um globally uh the the amount of construction that has happened in the last two and a half centuries almost 250 years that same amount of construction is going to take place in the next three decades overall and that leads to you know like and and it's it's impacted by you know globally we will be 10 billion people on the planet and uh, urbanization will be picking momentum further um the resource requirement per person globally would also go up and the amount of development in relatively time frame time is a important part over here would be incredible a lot and that's what leads to how technology would be adopted how you know architecture would be built how how construction would take place and across the entire supply chain across the entire system end to end you would see more and more technology adoption more and more innovation taking place and i would say production oriented space would take place that's bound to happen because that's where it it, it will evolve but what's important is as architects how we ensure this space of development is done in a sustainable manner it's it's brought together with the right practices how policy making is brought together and all the people who are early professional early career professionals they are the ones who will be governing this change or leading this change in the years to come you know decades to come and that leads to a lot of opportunities that also governs that all these people would have so many opportunities to pick up problem create a better way of doing it innovating around solutions and penetrating those solutions within the industry and and that that's what simply excites me like you know um, as architects as civil engineers as the ones who work in the industry we know ins and outs of the industry we know how the industry operates we have a unique insight what should be you know this is how this should be working and over there how we utilize technology how we utilize you know tech to make better ways of doing things can can really help us propel create an impact and make a difference in how india pans out in the next 25 years so so that's how i see as opportunities that's how i see where you know the country is headed and i think it's going to be a lot of fun seeing that come through and come together for us it's great to know how this construction industry and the technologies are developing so fast in india uh thank you so much for having this conversation with us like me being an architecture student it was a very insightful conversation and i'm sure our listeners as well so thank you so much great thank you shikha i really enjoyed it as well see you well that was harkuwar singh the ceo of novator we had a interesting conversation about the indian aec space and how a budding architect can steer through the uncertainties and build a rewarding career with specialization like bim and computational design thank you so much for listening to us till the end we'll see you in the next episode